trapped in there, fueled with the terror of becoming prey. See how quickly we become predator? See how quickly civilization disappears? There's a natural goodness built into us all. We can step across that line into evil. Or not. Well, still a hunger for the Hunger Games. That one is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Joining me now for more on this is our film critic, Richard Krauss. Good morning, Richard. What'd you think of it? Good morning, Roger. Well, this is an origin story. So if you're a fan of the Hunger Games movies with uh, Jennifer Lawrence, you already know that Coriolanus Snow is the tyrannical leader of Panem, which is the nation state where the Hunger Games that pits uh, people from the impoverished areas around the main city uh, against one another in a death match. That's where they happen. He's the ruler. This is his story. This is how he got there. And it's told in kind of three episodes, three segments uh, during the film, uh, one that sees him as a young man uh, involved in the Hunger Games. Uh, the second, he's uh, changed his attitude a little bit. He is on the road to ruin. And then in the third, he becomes the villain. And what it felt like to me is uh, that each of these episodes felt a little rushed. It, they all felt a little underdeveloped uh, because I think they're trying to tell too much story here. And I couldn't mm -hmm. help but think while I was sitting there for the two hours and 40 minutes Ooh. that it took to watch this movie, that it might have worked better as a miniseries. Let it uh, unfold over the course of a few weeks and maybe they would have been able to tell the entire story rather than trying to cram it all into one movie. So I gave it three out of five stars. I think that Fans of the Hunger Games will want to revisit this world. Uh, but if you're not a fan of the Hunger Games and you want to go see this, watch the other ones first because you'll need some context. All right. And let's move on now. One of your favorite movies ever. Trolls, right? <laughs> Trolls band together. What, what sequel is this? Uh, this is number three. No, this is number three. And you would think by the time you got to the third Trolls movie that there wouldn't be that much story to tell. And you'd be right. There isn't a whole <laughs> lot of story here. <laughs> Uh, it's essentially a kidnap story. One of the trolls has been kidnapped. The others have to bound, bond together uh, to rescue the, the Floyd, the imprisoned troll. Uh, and there's more. There's a, a story about a, a boy band made up of trolls, and there's a little love affair that happens throughout the thing. But essentially, this is just about the visuals. This is about going to the movies and just letting your eyeballs dance all over this thing because the characters are a lot of fun. They're colorful. They sing and dance frequently. I described the, the experience of watching this movie as kind of like watching fireworks. It kind of makes your your imagination light up for the moment that you're watching them. But as soon as you turn away, you don't really think about the fireworks anymore. And I think that's probably the same that's going to happen with Trolls Band Together, which is in theaters this weekend. So I gave that one three out of five stars as well. I think kids will probably like it. Uh, parents may be a little less so. Sounds like a good November movie, though. It's kind of blah, Maybe sad, so. lots of color, yep. lots of brightness. Yeah, no, I'm just looking out the window. It's gray out there. You go to the theaters and you're eyeballs will be lit up with this <laughs> frenetic action of this movie. All right, let's move on now to Rustin. Yeah, Rustin is a biopic, a really interesting one about a guy mm -hmm. called Bayard Rustin, who was one of the architects of the civil rights movement. Uh, name largely lost to history now, uh, but what we have here is a gay black man in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. This movie takes place in the 60s, uh, who is fighting for uh, civil rights. When we meet him, he's trying to arrange the 1963 March on Washington, uh, most famous as the location of where uh, Martin Luther King did his I Have a Dream speech. This is the story of the planning of that event. It's a little episodic. Uh, there's a lot of characters. There's a lot of political intrigue. There's a lot of things happening here. Uh, but by the time you get to the end and you get to the actual march itself, and it, it really packs an emotional wallop, as does the story of Rustin himself. This man's sort of lost to history now. Uh, but as played by Coleman Domingo, he's a really fascinating character. So I gave Rustin... Uh, which is now on Netflix. You can watch it tonight at home, three out of five stars. All right. As always, Richard, a pleasure. Thank you for those. Have a great day. 
YouTube. Thanks, Roger.